This is uh, the room, the top. The name, thank you. It's a comfortable time. The ninth accused foreign appeared before me for play. He pleaded not guilty to several counts, numbering seven. For clarity, in the substantive charge, count one to seven of the twelve charges appearing in the charge. Similarly, and for clarity of record, the co accused who are not present in court took plea on the 9th of May 2023 and each was released on hold of 100,000 shillings with an alternative of cash bail of 50,000 shillings. They paid the cash bail and are expected in court for pretrial directions on the 20th of June 2023. The reason I bring this is because the learned Senior Counsel Mother Karua asked this court to either adopt similar terms of bond or, in the alternative, grant the ninth accused free bond. The basis of this is equality of the accused in trial process, and secondly, that the accused being a reputable leader with what she terms as substantive self court base as a fixed place of a board. Similarly, she stated that the accused voluntarily appeared before this court on the 24th May 2023, appeared voluntarily before the DCI Nairobi on the 25th May 2023, and as voluntarily and without summons availed himself in court she concluded by stating that the accused is not a flight risk. In a little digression to the application, the senior learned counsel asked the court to note the following. First, that the judges hearing are politically motivated with the sole intention, with the sole intention of curtailing the accused from mobilizing his political support base and infringing on the accused political and civil rights of self-expression, association, and assembly. She complained further that when the accused appeared before the DCI on 25th May 2023, he was through tricks whisked away from his lawyers and it only took the intervention of the DPP for, his, for him to be reunited with his lawyers. This to her is a demonstration of mischief by the DCI. Mr. Njiru had this to say. Article, one, Article 27 of the Constitution provides for equality before the law. He laid this basis on the alleged statement by the deputy president, which in his view jeopardizes the trial of this case. He alleged that threats were issued to young men, and specified though, that they may face extrajudicial killings. He asked that this court should injure all bodies and organs from making statements and inferences that may jeopardize the trial hearing or statement that are subjudice. He associated himself with the submissions by the senior counsel that the accused should be released on free bond. The learned lead prosecutor, counsel minor, steered away from direct response to the issues raised by the counsel for the accused. She went legal. She asked that the court should make independent view and not driven by mercy, as alluded to by Counsel Jiro. She submitted that the court in granting bail should be guided by the existing bond and bail policy and the relevant laws. 
she submitted in objection to the accused admission to free bond. She asked that the court should consider a bond of faith that is consumerate to the offense. She either told she had either or no objection to the accused admission to bond. This is the determination. The law on accused admission to bond is clearly spelled out in Article 49 H of the Constitution. I deem it fit to restate, quote, an accused person has a right to be released on bond or bail on reasonable condition pending a charge of trial unless there are compelling reasons not to be released. The constitutional right to bail as guaranteed under the Constitution is therefore subject sorry. Yes, the constitutional right to bail as guaranteed under the Constitution is therefore subject to being granted on reasonable conditions pending trial or unless compelling reasons not to do so and does not mean that the right is absolute. In the end, the discretion to grant bail and determine the conditions rest with the court. In exercising this discretion, the court must seek to strike a balance between protecting the liberty of the accused person and safeguarding proper administration of justice. This was well explained by Mativo J, as he then was, in Republic vs. Court Kabage Mwangi, 2016 EKLR, as follows. Quote, Granting bail entails the striking of a balance of proportionality considering the rights to the applicant who is presumed innocent at this point on one hand and the public interest on the other hand. The cornerstone of the justice system is that no one will be punished without benefit of due process. Incarceration before trial, when the outcome of the case is yet to be determined, cuts against this principle. The need for bail is to ensure that the accused person will appear for trial and not corrupt the legal process by absconding. Anything more is excessive and positive, end of quote. The conditions for grant of bail, sorry, the conditions for grant or refusal of bond and factors for consideration have been broadly identified as follows. These are the courts, these are what the courts must consider. One, the nature of the charge. Two, the strength of the evidence which support the charge. Three, the gravity of the punishment in the event of conviction. Four, the previous criminal record of the accused, if any. Five, probability that the accused would not surrender himself for trial. Six, the likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that could incriminate him. Seven, the likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that could incriminate him. Eight, the likelihood of further charges being brought to the, against the accused. Nine, the probability of guilt, 10, detention for protection of the accused, Ele and 11, the necessity to procure medical or social reports pending the final disposal of the case. In the case hearing, the prosecution are not opposed to the accused admission to form. 
the requirement, their request, sorry, is that it be compatible with the offense the accused is facing. My point of interrogation, owing to the accused status in the society, would be ground six and seven <coughs> as outlined above, and for clarity are as follows. The likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that would incriminate him, and the likelihood of the accused interfering with witnesses or suppressing any evidence that would incriminate him. I, however, want to state that the accused has been out on anticipatory bail granted by Nairobi High Court Miscellaneous E 165 of 2023. Hence, in my view, cannot be applied first. I, however, wish to observe that considering during the circumstance of this case, conditions ought to be placed on the accused admission to form. And I give the following condition. One, that the ninth accused is submitted to a bond of 100,000 shillings or an alternative cash base of 50,000 as the other four accused. Two, the accused is restrained from making statements either through press or in public rallies which make any direct reference to this case. Three, that the accused shall in the pendency of this case never make any contact with any prosecution witnesses known to him in a manner that is likely to jeopardize the trial of this case. Finally, that any violation of the above condition shall lead to cancellation of the bond tax. Those are the orders of this court. Mr. Blake, but one small issue missing. We did complain through the wajiru of an official who is making statements in the case. Although the prosecution has not complained of the accused, you have given restricting orders to the accused. What about those who are talking about the case as presidency, mm -hmm. the accused? Could there be directions? And after that, I'll seek indulgence for Ms. Amboro to talk about uh, something we overlooked Uh, you will be requiring directions on the anticipated uh, application, I presume. Because I was yeah, thinking in, we, in we, those not, we, we wanted to leave the other application, we may not require uh, you to re re retire, but let me suppose. Yes, I'm, I'm not retiring, I'm giving all the directions okay. here and here. So let I was suppose. thinking we did with both. Oh. So that if I'm giving directions, I give you. Okay. Okay. So the final solution of the court 
Yes, Mr. Simon Boyle, my name is Simon Boyle. The kind commission of the law. Yes. I'm the owner for the defense. I have the following application to make. This is in respect to the release of the following properties that was seized from the nine accused person. Number one, your owner is a motor vehicle, registration number KAW 831N, Toyota Premium. This was picked from his residence at Wanaroro. Yes. The vehicle was picked from the residence. that I have from my colleague is that that residence that don't belong to him does belong to his mother, which I will come to address that, uh, that part you want. The second motor vehicle is motor vehicle registration number KCR 355S. Make is a Lexus Toyota. Is KCR. Triple five S Lexus Toyota picked from the said residence. This motor vehicle was driven away from the parking by a police officer. The third <coughs> motor vehicle is vehicle registration number KCE 500S B8, same size from the same uh, residence. <coughs> and your honor, there are two fonts. A Samsung Paul and a Note 23. These were picked from the moon. Two fonts, two fonts a Samsung, Samsung Paul and a Samsung Note 23. These were saved from Homestead in the moon. The gist of the application, Your Honor, is that a casualty group at sorry there is another motor vehicle it's a let, let me let me dilute of this uh, yes answer. I get a lot of information yes 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 uh, and I apologize for, for, for that for yes. that is continued way of yes yes just a minute do you have the substantive response to this? Yes, I think we should let this one come in the form of application. So that you have the Yes? That's the right way to do Yes. Yes, I have. I'm well guided and the and the from the the sentiment from senior council we would like to make a formal application in respect to this. Thank you very much.
protecting the edges of property, the council has a formal application for comprehensive response by the prosecution and adequate determination by this court. On the second application by the senior council, touching on alleged utterances a need to restrain an alleged government official. My view is that uh, bail and bond is a covenant between the court and the person charged. On that application, no material has been placed before me on the alleged utterances, and it's difficult for me to issue a blanket order. Court orders on the are issued on specific circumstances and directed to a particular person. I end at that. I decline to make any orders respecting the application. Also, when necessary, you make applications against those persons. That's the form of application. We just thought that for the duty of the court to see nobody makes. Yeah, Not okay. directing an order to any specific person, but we will file applications. Okay. I think that is all. I'm sorry, my ruling, you may not be able to get it now. It's unwritten, owing to the constraint of time. So I love it. Uh, you may obtain the certified copy. We have to Oh, sorry, it's, it's true. Yes, the other matter, this matter you mentioned for prepare direction on the 20th of June. Yes, like the other six persons, they have to come back for prepare direction on the 20th of June as earlier scheduled. That's all. Thank you very much.